looks like we have everyone in who's, who's here to start with us. So I'm going to say a little hello, welcome. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I am Natalie uh, kapelik nixon I'm the Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministries for the Ukraine Orthodox Church of the USA. But I also serve as uh, the chairman for the Orthodox Youth Directors in North America. And if you aren't familiar with our committee, we are the working body committee of uh, youth directors from all the jurisdictions of the Assembly of Bishops. Uh, our goal is to provide resource and uh, guidance and help to youth workers, uh, Orthodox youth workers around the world, uh, mostly North America, but you know, in today's reach, it's around the world. So one of our uh, main resources is, is conducting webinars like this, and we're very pleased to have all of you with us. Um, I'm going to quickly introduce our presenters today. We have with us Father Joseph Purpura, who is the Director of Youth Ministries for the Antiochian Orthodox Church, as well as the pastor at St. George uh, Antiochian Orthodox Church Cathedral in Montreal. We have Anne Bezaridis, who is the Director of Vocation. Vocation, Anne? Vocation and Ministry. Vocation and Ministry at Holy Cross uh, Hellenic College. And we have also with us Steve Christofori, who is the Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministries for the Greek Orthodox Church of the USA in Canada. Got to keep all those straight. So I want to thank all of our presenters, presenters for being here with us today. And I'm going to turn it over to Father Joseph, uh, who is going to uh, lead us in an opening prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, O Heavenly King, the comfort of the Spirit of Truth, who are present everywhere and fills all things, Treasure of blessings and bountiful giver of life. Come that abide among us. Cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O good one. O Lord and Master Jesus Christ, send down thy blessings upon all of us and the work that we do with the young people whom you have placed before us. For you are God with the people of the works of your hands that we call upon your name. Always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So thank you, Father Joseph. Tonight's webinar is focusing on what's available in youth worker training. Uh, obviously, I think when people think youth worker training, they think they have to go to seminary full time and they will come out with a full seminary degree and uh, uh, with a youth ministry concentration. And, and that's the ideal. That's what we'd all like to do and be able to have the time to do. But uh, unfortunately, that isn't the reality for many of us. And some of us kind of stumbled our way possibly into youth work and found that we loved it and it was something we were called to, but maybe don't feel that we had the training behind us. Uh, or maybe we've had training and, and just feel like we need to, to con continue that professional development in our lives of what we're doing. And we're often asked, uh, and I hear often, well, what, what do you have training sessions or what can we do for youth work? And so we thought this would be a really great way to bring people together and tell you what is out there uh, on many different levels and for um, many different kind, uh, your time commitment level, uh, maybe where you're at as far as your um, your educational level within youth work and and theology. So we want to show you what's out there and, and the broad spectrum of what is available to youth workers. So we're going to start with Father Joseph, who probably has the longest running program uh, outside of a full seminary uh, educational setting. So Father Joseph, I'm going to turn you over and you can start to, you can tell everyone about the St. Stephen's course. Sure. So I will kind of go in my role as professor of youth ministry and the director of accreditation for the Antiochian House of Studies. Uh, the St. Stephen's program, which is a, one of the programs of the Antiochian House of Studies, started back in 1980. Uh, but about 10 years ago, the teens of for the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese specifically asked us for well-trained youth workers. Youth workers who not only knew uh, how, kind of how to do youth ministry, but really knew the Orthodox theology so that they could lead them into a deeper relationship with Christ and the Holy Orthodox Church. Hence, at the request of our young people, we de developed within the Antiochian House of Studies a master degree uh, level program in concentration in youth ministry. And what I'd like to do is to take a little bit of time just to 
walk through that program, show you the courses uh, that we offer. I will tell you that it is a master degree program. Uh, the master degree currently comes uh, by the uh, Balaman University, which is our patriarchal school. Uh, but I will also tell you as the director of accreditation for the Antioch and Hustle Studies, uh, we've already been uh, accepted as an associate member of the ATS, so the American Theological uh, Schools, and uh, we're working a full American accreditation at this time. So under the umbrella of the Antioch and Hustle Studies, we have a master degree program, we have a doctor of ministries, and we have a PhD program, uh, all of which are accredited programs. So I'd like to just kind of give you a little brief overview of the St. Stephen's program because it has several concentrations, but I will focus specifically on the youth ministry concentration. So the St. Stephen's is either a certificate, a three-year certificate program, or it's a master degree program. And the only difference between the certificate program or the master's program is whether you write a thesis or not. So as I tell all my students, you've done all the work, now it's time to write the thesis. And thank God most of them write their thesis and they get their, um, their master degree currently from the Balamon University and the Antirganasa Studies. And soon it will be just strictly from the Antirganasa Studies once we receive our full accreditation. Um, so one of the things that we felt early on that was really critical was that this was not just a how to do youth ministry program, but it was a uh, youth ministry concentration deeply rooted in our Orthodox theology. And all of us as jurisdictional youth directors have spent tremendous amount of time on formation and the importance of Orthodox formation and that it's uniquely different uh, than other uh, youth ministry programs kind of a, a, across the spectrum of various religious groups. But our Orthodox formation, perhaps the oldest formation in the history of Christianity, uh, is very specific. So our um, master degree youth ministry concentration really focuses on topics such as scripture, doctrine, fundamentals of orthodoxy, liturgical theology, pastoral theology, church history, patristics, as well as focusing specifically on uh, four unique youth ministry classes that once again are master degree level, uh, full three credit courses. Um, and we also, uh, it is a directed reading course. So it was designed specifically for those who cannot go off to seminary. Our intent was never to replace our seminaries, but it was for those who are either already married, working full-time jobs, and just simply can't uh, give up three years to go off to seminary. As I've always said, that's the ideal. Go off to school if you can. Uh, go live at seminary and have that experience. But uh, currently we have uh, about 250 students in this program this year. Um, and they all are doing directed reading courses. And in, in some ways it's a hybrid course because um, most of the work is done from uh, the, the student's home. But they also have to come for an intensive week. Uh, this is the first year in the 20 some odd years that I've taught in the Antirkinasa Studies that we're actually uh, doing this virtually. Um, but in general, you would uh, come to uh, the Antioch and House of uh, Studies residency program and spend a full program uh, and do real work and work alongside a, uh, another priest or uh, other person who's in an uh, orthodox setting. Unit three, you'll cover uh, scripture two, uh, you'll do patristics once again, and then again another youth ministry class, practical aspects of youth ministry, relational ministry and spiritual development in youth, and then in unit five, again doctrine, uh, the knowledge and tradition of the church, pastoral theology, and again another a practicum during that uh, session. And the practicums uh, are, are really full-blown practicums. You're expected to come out, uh, first of all, develop a, a program that could work in a parish or diocese or other type of setting and actually implement it and have it evaluated and so forth. So it's real hands-on youth ministry experience that the person is getting. And then Unit 5, um, Doctrine 2, 
uh, practical aspects of uh, youth ministry designing and building a parish youth ministry, and then practical aspects of youth ministry, moral and ethical issues confronting Orthodox youth. And these are real in-depth courses where students work uh, very diligently. They're full three credit uh, courses. They meet the standards of accreditation for the amount of reading and writing and uh, time that you have to spend with your professor and uh, reading and so forth. Unit six, which is the um, really the semester in which you're writing your master's thesis. Uh, if you're in the youth ministry concentration, as with the practicums, uh, all of your work is focused in an area of youth ministry. And uh, so at the end of those three years, you have uh, really uh, fulfilled the master degree program. You will receive a master degree. Um, and it's, uh, it's a beautiful class. We, uh, we're blessed in the Interconnecticut Studies and that many of the people who have uh, participated in our master level program often uh, have advanced degrees already. Some have their doctorates. Others are you know, various professionals. So the caliber of students is a very high caliber. Uh, so as I mentioned, the, uh, the directed practice courses really are about helping you uh, really develop your skills in youth ministry. Um, you, you'll develop on paper, you'll work with uh, your mentor and professor, and then you'll work with a local pastor or program and really uh, develop out that. Some, some examples of a practicum that have been done is extended teen ministry outreach practice, including preparing teens, implementing practice, debriefing teens, designing, building and training a parish youth ministry team, developing and uh, implementing teen weekend retreat, but not just simply doing a weekend retreat, but really developing it fully from the beginning all the way through with a full evaluation and, and really interviews and so forth. And as you can see, there are many other examples of that. Um, twice during this program, you have to do an intensive week-long residency. My students are gearing up uh, for their residency, which starts uh, the Friday before Labor Day. They will spend 20 hours with me in class and 20 hours with another professor during that one week program. Um, so once again, uh, students who successfully complete their three years of youth ministry concentration, uh, who also hold a bachelor's degree, uh, can do their thesis in that last semester. And sometimes we'll extend that if needed and then they will receive their master degree program. Uh, the cost of the program is, is fairly reasonable. Uh, it's approximately um, 800, $600 to $850 a semester, uh, depending on what you're really choosing to do uh, in the program. And, uh, and then your thesis semester is, uh, is about the same cost. And then your residency, the two of which you have to do, each one of them costs about $800 six to $800, depending on the level of a room you want uh, during that residency. So it's also a very affordable program. Most of us who teach of the program take very re reduced salaries or no salaries just to keep this program very affordable for our students. So um, we encourage you, you can uh, find us at um, the Antiochian House of Studies, so T-A-H-O-S dot O-R-G. And if you look at the uh, Masters in Applied Theology, uh, you'll find the Youth Ministry Concentration. And we encourage you and welcome you. Our students come from across the world and from virtually every Orthodox jurisdiction, uh, including the uh, Coptic Church, the Armenian Church, and other um, Oriental churches. And we welcome all students into our program. And it's really a beautiful program. So I would encourage you to join us. I also want to take this opportunity to thank our other panelists for really offering other opportunities and youth ministry, because each of us offers something uniquely different, depending on where you are in your life and what it is that you're seeking in youth ministry. So uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, to share with you. And uh, to the other panelists, it's really great seeing you all. So it's good to be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Father Joseph. It is so nice to see one another. I, you know, one of the blessings that I think of the time we're in is that no matter how far apart we are, Zoom has really showed us how close together we can be. So uh, I'm appreciative of that as well. But thank you, Father Joseph, for, for telling us about that program. It's such a wonderful program. You're welcome. And, and, and really affords you, you know, a, a substantial background in, in youth work when you walk away. So uh, we're going to step in. I'm next. So we're going to step into that. Um, I head up our uh, the Youth Ministry Certification course for 
St. Sophia Seminary, and I am going to share my screen here. This screen, what I have to show you is going to be much more interesting than looking at me. So I'm going to share this with you all. So uh, the course came about um, because uh, many of my youth workers, uh, as I had mentioned, kind of in the intro, kind of fell into doing youth work. Uh, it was not something traditionally for us uh, to have uh, people go and, and be trained in youth work. It was something that you would be interested in and, and, and possibly learn on your own or it would be passed down or maybe within a, a, a parish they would have a good training program. And so we uh, we saw the need for it within our own uh, within our own diocese. Um, in in doing so, in starting the certification program, we we found that there were several parishes in the same spot that our parishes were in. People who wanted to do the work, feel called to do the work, but possibly felt that they didn't have. Um, all of the training and background that they needed to do the work the way they they envisioned or wanted to do. So uh, a little bit about St. Sophia's. Uh, St. Sophia is, uh, a lot of people don't know about St. Sophia's. It was established in 1975 and it's located in South Boundbrook, New Jersey, literally a stone's throw from Rutgers University. Uh, it is a full-time seminary uh, uh, with uh, student housing. Uh, they also have a diaconate program and a distance learning program. And the Youth Ministry Certification course falls under the distance learning program. Uh, St. Sophia's is a fully accredited institution through the state of New Jersey. And uh, something we share with Father Joseph, uh, he was the one who, Father, what did you say? You were the one who, who endorsed us as we were, we were brought into the Association of Theological Schools. Sure, I had that pleasure. It was a great honor to be able to do that for all of you. Yeah, so that was, that was so nice to get that, that, that note from him. And that's something that we were, we were just brought into uh, this summer. And we also have associations with several seminaries and uh, universities, uh, not only across the country, but um, throughout the world. So it's just a little bit about St. Sophia Seminary. Um, so the, the course itself is online instruction. And we did this because, again, as we spoke, I, I, I told you the, the impetus for this was youth workers on the ground who didn't have that opportunity to go to seminary. Uh, and, you know, people who are living their lives, taking care of their kids, doing all sorts of things, and trying to do youth work. Uh, so it is online instruction. Uh, there, it's a two-semester course, and there are two classes per semester. So you will walk away with an accredited uh, certification for one year of learning at St. Sophia. Um, our team is, uh, first and foremost, his eminence Archbishop Daniel, who is the provost and academic dean, and he uh, oversees the program. Our curricula is submitted to him, and uh, he also will, you know, he, he oversees graduation. Uh, uh, there are two main instructors, Father Gregory Jensen. Father Gregory um, is in Wisconsin, and he is at Acadia University. Um, and he also uh, teaches occasionally at the University of Wisconsin. And then myself, uh, which I, I, I understand the person who takes this course because I am the person who fell into youth work. <laughs> I'm the person who worked in the trenches at camping ministry for 10 years and then moved into taking on young adult work with our UK Orthodox League. Like I am that person. I started the youth ministry program in my parish. I understand coming from that place of and that desire of wanting to do it but not feeling that you have the um the know-how or or that theological background behind you to do it. And not having the opportunity to get that theological background. So um, I come from that place, but also now it's just kind of strange for me to say I'm at 20 years of, of officially being uh, in, in this position. And so I have that um, 
that background for me. So I have the background of doing the work for, 20, for, for about 10 years and then moving into this position of a director of youth ministry for now 20 years. And, and so that's where I'm coming from in my, in my participation as an instructor. So two, core, two classes per semester. Um, so first semester with Father Gregory, the class is Basic Orthodox Theology for Youth Workers. Uh, Father Gregory uh, provides weekly readings and they have discussion on the readings. Uh, he normally has not done face-to-face um, -face instruction, but this year he is actually going to be starting uh, implementing some face-to-face -face instruction in addition to more of that sort, sort of correspondence distance learning. Uh, in addition to uh, the weekly readings and discussion, he has a, uh, a reading list and then you will have to present a final paper from a book on that reading list. And the, the books that are on the reading list are kind of those orthodox classics of, of basic theology uh, for you to choose from. Your second class in the first semester is uh, Youth Ministry Fundamentals of Approach and Ideology. Uh, that's with me, and it is a weekly online instruction. Um, and I've always wanted to tell you this, but I use so Sophie Coulomson's book, Our Church, Our Children, as my textbook for that, <laughs> for that class. And um, in addition to using that as a textbook, we uh, each week we look at a different aspect of what is the ideology between be, behind ministry in general, but then how in the broader sense, uh, it, not the broader sense, but the more concentrated sense of youth work, and then the fundamentals of approach. So, what is our approach um, through our faith, and 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 how is our theology tied to the approach and ideology of youth work? Um, for for that class, there's just a final exam. Uh, for the second semester, uh, Father Gregory teaches contemporary moral issues in teenagers. It's a similar format and. Uh, with a final paper and father gregory is there um for all the all sorts of uh, not just instruction but if you need to talk through things with him he is available uh whenever you contact him uh to sort of get deeper into a subject uh for myself the second semester class is youth ministry practicum so basically taking everything we learned in the first semester uh, from both courses, and then now how do we practically apply that? Uh, this is a little more work heavy. Uh, in, in addition to the weekly instruction, there is a midterm paper, and then there is a final project, and it is a practical project. So it, it is interesting kind of doing it this year with my class because they had to adapt <laughs> with not being able to do things in person. They, they had a very quick turnaround of how do I put together a youth program or a youth session online. Um, so that was kind of interesting for my class this year. That's how they had to kind of turn on a dime their, their final projects. Uh, but normally the final project is having to put together a session for young people. I leave it up to the student to present to me what they would like to do, what age group, what type of session, and an outline of what they're going to be working on. Uh, once they, they do the project, uh, if I can be there virtually, which I was doing prior to, they all have, they'll Zoom me in and I can be there and watch the session. Uh, if not, they record it so I can watch the session. And then in addition to the live session, they have to submit their outline work and what they learned from, from, from the process. Uh, then they will come back with me and I will have a feedback session with the student um, as to where I felt their strengths were and where they could possibly uh, tweak what they, what they did. Um, so that is the course. It, it, it is substantial. You are taking two full, full, cor full, full uh, courses uh, on a weekly basis. 
Um, I think some of the benefits are is they are small classes. They are not huge classes. They're they're normally not more than 10 individuals. And it's, as Father Joseph said, a beautiful thing that we have uh, students who come from the breadth of uh, our Orthodox world. And um, so it's interesting, you know, to hear the different backgrounds from the different people and where they're coming from and, and being able to learn from one another. Uh, the cost, I think, is very affordable for, uh, for someone who is, is coming from this sort of background. It is $400 a semester. And then there is a registration fee, uh, which I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's a minimal registration fee. Uh, I think another one of the benefits for this program is the t is the time commitment. You know, if you aren't able to um, you know to give that that really big time commitment uh, with St. Stephen's course or even what Anne's going to be talking about with her new program, um, you know, you're going to be getting a full year of study, but you can do it from home. So uh, that is our uh, St. Sophia's Youth Ministry Certification course. Um, we are starting in September with this year's program. So if anyone is interested, there is still time to register. And you can find that at uh, uscyouth.org or at St. Sophia's Seminary dot org. Okay. So I think that's it for me. And now I have the pleasure of turning it over to Ann Bezzerides. Or Steve, do you want to go before me? I'm okay. happy. I can go first. I'm like the newest. I'm like the new kid on the block. And Thanks, Ann. I forgot. <laughs> Here, and I'll go. That's all good. That's all okay, good. good. Sorry. Everybody. I have the pleasure to turn it over to Steve Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> good to be with everybody. How's it going? Um, so I want to I want to share a course that we put together, launched back in January, with a a question. A question that's really been haunting me pretty much my entire life: uh, Why is it? Why is it that young people fall away from the church? I tell you, this this question has been haunting me my entire life. I remember very vividly as a kid growing up in my home parish, uh, looking at the walls of our Sunday school classrooms and seeing that back in my mom's generation, there were literally a thousand kids who were participating in the Sunday school. And then I looked around in my time and we had a few hundred, you know, maybe 200. I'm like, where did, where did everybody else go? How come, how come all these kids, the kids of, the kids of my mom's friends, right? That grew up here, like, where are they? And then when I started teaching Sunday school in that same parish later on, um, after law school, before I went to seminary, the entire Sunday school was composed of 25 kids. So I think it's really fascinating to see that in the space of a lifetime, we went from a thousand kids in a Sunday school down to 25. So these questions have been haunting me for a long time, uh, from before I went to seminary, during seminary, the last few years, traveling around, leading retreats, doing all sorts of stuff like that. And the, 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 the burden on my heart, like just the pain that I, that, I, that I feel for these young people who end up falling away from the church, uh, my friends that I grew up with, family that I grew up with, a lot of it for me really crystallized uh, during a retreat that I was leading a few years ago here in the New York area, actually, when I met a young adult named Catherine, who shared with me her story. And she was in her mid-20s by the time that I met her. She talked about growing up in the parish that hosted the retreat. She told us how she did everything the parish had for its young people, right? There was athletic stuff, she was there. There was youth groups, she was there. There was Sunday school, she was there. There were services, she was there. She was volunteering for this. She was helping with that. She was doing everything. Totally plugged in, totally committed to everything the church was offering her as a young person. And then of course, as happens with many young people, unfortunately, she graduates high school and she's gone. And she doesn't describe what happened in her life as kind of a, a slow decline or anything like that. She describes it as binary. She was totally plugged in through her teenage years and then she graduates high school and she's gone. And I meet her a couple of years after this. She was, like I said, in her mid twenties. She said she heard that there was this young adult group that was gathering and she'd been spending so many years looking for a new group to belong to. 
And for weeks after that, I remember just kind of like obsessing about the way that she phrased that. Like she's here looking for another group. She's not here looking for the church. She's not here looking for Christ. She's here looking for something different, potentially because these are the expectations that the people who helped raise her actually ended up setting for her. So these are some of the questions that keep me up at night and have been burning in my heart. And unfortunately, Catherine's story is far from unique. I know every time I share this story with her, I get a lot of nods from people who either know somebody like Catherine or have been Catherine at some point. And of course, you know, if you look at some of the big picture data, it's not just the Orthodox Church, 60% of young people, right? I mean, potentially, right? There, I mean, the, there's, there's tweaks to this, uh, the, the, the data sort of changes all the time, but at least 60% of young people fall away from the church that raises them as they transition from teenagers to, to young adults. Um, if anything, this, this ministry challenge that we're facing, not simply as American Christians, but as Orthodox Christians, has, um, oh, there it goes, has, has, has um, accelerated over the course of the last couple of months, right? Because of the pandemic. It's, it's no longer simply that half of our young people are going to be going away. We have this added complication recently of the pandemic. And we're seeing that one in three practicing Christians, right, have stopped attending church. So we have kind of this pre-existing ministry challenge that we've been struggling with added now to these other sorts of things that are happening as ministry is going online and people are feeling more disconnected, right? These, the latent sort of American loneliness, loneliness and disconnection that has been building for all of these decades, maybe even generations, just continuing to percolate to the surface. And that's the reason why we created this course. That's the reason we created Effective Christian Ministry, um, which is really about, it's kind of a mix of psychology and sociology and theology, all sort of like mixed up together. It really tries to get at the heart of like why young people are leaving. What are the needs that they are carrying around as, as citizens of the 21st century with particular hopes, particular dreams, particular doubts, particular fears, what is it that young people need from the church? And what is it that they haven't been getting necessarily? The way we approach the course is pretty straightforward. It's, it's 13 lessons altogether. It's about five lessons, five hours of lessons. They're all video, it's all online. You can take it at your leisure. Module one, we call the mountains of ministry. Cause you know, in scripture, we have this question of like mountains as being places of transformation. But with the young adults like Catherine, they're not really being transformed in a lot of situations by the ministry that's forming them. So we kind of ask the question like, why? What's happening in the lives of these young people? What are the needs that are going unaddressed? We really try to get into that in module two and we use the metaphor of making a map. We try to start with you are here, which is of course where every map starts with. We try to be clear about where we're going. We try to talk about like, what are the things that get in the way? What are the things that get in the way of faith in the lives of young people? What are the things that end up being factors that filter people out? and prevent them from staying connected with the church. So that's what we do in, mon in module two. And then module three, it all gets very concrete. We boil it down to five core practices. So it's really not about kind of apologetics. I mean, we don't really cover any theology in the course. It's really about the psychology and the, the sort of deep existential needs and questions that young people are carrying around. What are the things that we can do? How can we show them? What is the way into which we can introduce young people? So it's not simply like ministry that for the head, but ministry for the heart. And these are the five practices to form people, to shape people into faithful Orthodox Christians. Um, we got a really, we have about 500 people who are in the course right now. We launched, you know, eight months ago in January and we've got 490 something. So just about 500 people. Uh, the feedback's been great. Uh, everybody from novices who are just starting ministry to people who are much more um, advanced and experienced. Like this is one quote from a senior priest uh, who's been involved in ministry for many, many decades at a very high level. He wrote to tell us, I could not be more grateful for the Effective Christian Ministry series. As someone who worked directly in youth ministries for decades, I can say that this has been a long time coming and I don't think it could fill the need we've had any better. So it really, like somebody who knows what he's talking about, who's been doing ministry for a long time, and also um, people who are new. We got this really wonderful comment from a young woman who was a new ministry volunteer. And I think her comment really explains, I think, why um, the course has been making an impact with people. She wrote, thank you. Effective Christian ministry addresses exactly what I'm thinking about all the time, not just as a ministry worker, but mostly as a person trying to live inside the church in this day and age, constantly struggling with doubt and with the prevalent contemporary demand for each of us to find our own individual place in the world. And that I think really kind of gets at what the course is about. It's really about 
what are these existential needs? What are the existential itches that people have? How can the church scratch those needs? How can the church really look people in the, in the eye, understand who they are, understand where they're coming from? And sometimes it's like really basic stuff, like struggling with doubt, struggling with loneliness, struggling with disconnection. And how can the church and youth workers and parents, right? All of us, how can we more act to satisfy some of those needs and turn the, those needs into opportunities for ministry? 13 lessons, 15 lessons, uh, three modules. Uh, it's all online. You're all able to do it as you go. I apologize for that motorcycle out there. Um, we're running a special on the course through the end of the month. Uh, normally registration is $75, um, but until the end of the month, you can use the promo code August 50, that's August 50, and get 50% off registration. So that lowers it to just 3750. And if you're not convinced, you can go to the website. Um, you can go and actually do a free preview of the first couple of lessons so you can get a sense of where we're coming from. If, you're, if it's not for you, that's totally okay. If it's something you want to take a look at, feel free. We have a 30 day money back guarantee as well. So if you wanna try it and then it just turns out that it's not for you, that's totally okay. Um, I think one of the great uh, opportunities about a webinar like this is that there's lots of different opportunities based on the time that you have available, based on your sort of geographic location, right? Like this is a thing, just about five hours of lessons online, very low end barrier to entry. Um, and I think hopefully can be kind of an entry for a lot of points into youth ministry. Um, so if there's like a first step before maybe you get into some of the other stuff that demand more of your time, maybe this is kind of the ground floor. Um, so until the end of the month, we're doing this uh, special, August 5-0. Um, hopefully for a lot of people out there, it's a way to get them deeper into this universe of the great training opportunities that are available out there. So give Effective Christian Ministry a look and uh, let us know what you think. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. It doesn't matter how long we've been online with Zoom, I still continually forget to unmute myself all the time. <laughs> right? And I talk and my hands are going and people always say, Natalie, please unmute yourself. <laughs> so sorry, that took me a second. Um, so Steve, thank you. And, and I love like, we've, we've kind of like shown you, you know, different levels of, of where you, where you can, where you can come into, to youth work. And now Anne is going to present to us uh, the new program that's coming out of Holy Cross uh, Hellenic College that is, it gives you a whole different level and opportunity. So, Anne, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm just going to turn it over to you. Great. This is my first time presenting on this program, so I hope you all bear with me. Um, but I, I want to just say what an honor it is to be with the three of you on this call and, you know, uh, my new shtick is they are all, all our kids. And when one of them walks into church, especially young adults and wants to be there, it's a miracle at this point in our, in what's going on in our world, in our country. Let's not get into the COVID reality of any, like, and walking into church and whether, and how many people, blah, blah, blah. But just in general, when somebody walks in and it's all, it's such a miracle. And to have adults actually just digging in um, to continue to invest in young adults, youth and young adults is just so powerful and it takes all of us all the time. So um, our new youth and young adult uh, ministry, uh, certificate in ministry and leadership actually emanates from our Crossroads Summer Institute originally, and I will just pull up this. Um, Crossroad is a um, pan, hopefully everybody knows of it, but in case, it was founded in 2004, uh, a pan-Orthodox program, program for kids from all Orthodox jurisdictions, um, originally hosted just at Helena College Holy Cross. Uh, we've now expanded to Chicago, and we have plans to expand um, next to California and other regions. Um, so we have now 970 alums across the country. Um, and we've been doing that for a while. And it, uh, we just watch its impact on, on young people and are amazed. Um, we've been doing that for a while and then started a new project that emerged um, from our relationship with um, Lily Endowment, who actually started Crossroad and then funding, uh, launched a new initiative called the Telos Project, where we're helping parish. It's a five-year project exploring how Orthodox Christian young adults engage in their parishes. And so we've got par pilot parishes across the country. Um, 
experimenting with how do we engage young adults in their 20s, specifically the ages of 23 to 29? What can we do to help them? So out of um, sort of our love for our Crossroad alums, who are so many of whom are now in their 20s and 30s, um, and out of this new research project, we realized that there was a, a hole in, in, in the universe, which is a year of formation at, we had a lot of people saying, I'd love to come spend a year at, at the seminary. I don't want to do it for my life, but I'd love to come for a year. And hey, can I serve on Crossroads staff? Well, to date, we've only had Crossroads staff from among um, students who are full-time master's students at Holy Cross, either master's and, or MDiv. So um, out of this was born this new certificate in youth and young adult ministry and leadership. It is a 12-month, uh, usually residential course in non-COVID times um, uh, that um, is designed for those who've completed their bachelor's degrees and wishing to, wish to deepen their theological knowledge while this, developing their skills and understanding for ministry and leadership with youth and young adults. Quick summary is that the program consists of 18 credits of graduate level academic work with a work study component. Students will begin with the Hellenic College Holy Cross academic year uh, while sim simultaneously taking part in a work study that focuses on one particular aspect of ministry. Work study will be conducted through the Office of Vocation and Ministry, which is the office I direct, um, the both the Crossroads Summer Institute or the TELOS Project, giving the participants intensive mentor training as they deepen their theological knowledge and spiritual formation. Uh, we have funding from Leadership 100, which has been amazing. So we have seven um, full tuition scholarships available for this. They are, as of today, closed. Um, so we do not have room this year. However, uh, we are praying that this will continue and it will become a permanent part of our institution. Actually, if I were to dream, this turns into a master's program as well, but um, we'll see one step at a time. Um, and who it's designed for is um, those who want to serve as a youth director, youth activities coordinator, or administrator at the parish diocesan or metropolis level. Uh, those who want to gain experience and skills with a specific skill set who want to deepen their theological knowledge, who want to take a year off from professional work or training, uh, professional training, or who want to just explore their vocation, who either came to Crossroad or are trying to figure out what's next in life and are ready to dig in. Um, I'll jump down here to the work study component because I think that um, helps explain and you can see the academic program here as well. Um, but <clears throat> this is both a way for us to draw in new blood for our, our Crossroad Summer Staff Program, uh, so for our Crossroad Summer Institute for Program Staff. Um, we also, it's been very clear to us that we need um, great administrators in the church, um, people who are trained to do administration really well. So we have an administrative track. We have a development and fundraising track um, that's integral to all the work we do, uh, photography and media track, and a communications track, and that's working with Telos. Um, so we're really, really excited about um, these seven incredible young people, most of whom are within a couple years out of college and a few a little bit older than that, but most of them are, are sort of young 20s and want a year to dig in. Um, academic program is uh, a specially designed course in Orthodox Christianity, which will be taught by our Dean, Father Maximus Constus, uh, Intro to New Testament, Church History, and I teach the Youth Ministry course uh, in the spring continuation of the Orthodox Christianity course, uh, Old Testament, church history, and then there is room for electives. Um, so if somebody wanted to work on Byzantine chant or um, had a special passion in one area, there would be room for that. Um, the other component and the reason we call it uh, youth ministry and leadership is that we're actually simultaneously um, designing a third component. So there's a curricular component, work study component, and then there's a leadership series um, and um, for years, we've been mentoring and training people in our office around great leadership practices um, in church offices. And so we're actually finally formalizing that and have um, some of our favorite speakers coming in to guide and shape that curriculum, including um, Kim Kasopoulos, who um, is the president of Chick-fil-A, Deacon Michael Hyatt, who many of you know. So 
um, they are going to invest in a uh, really phenomenal leadership series with our young adults. And uh, we hope it'll be a year that is transformational um, for seven people and that they will truly come out and be leaven uh, to all of our churches, parishes, and jurisdictions. So I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, and we'll definitely ask for your prayers because we don't know how it'll go. And I am known for building the ship as we try to sail it. <laughs> So, thank you, Natalie. All right, awesome. And it's so neat. It's so neat to see what everybody's doing, and uh, and sort of delve into it a little bit. So uh, that's what we have to offer you right now from the four of us uh, and we are open now to take any questions that anyone has uh there are a couple ways to do that here uh if you look at the bottom hopefully we've all, we've all done zoom uh there is a q a section uh you can raise your hand and i'll see that and uh, if you'd like to um ask your question i can give you the ability to to chime in and ask us yourself um, so I will keep an eye on that if anyone has any questions for us. Um, I would ask the three of you, um, what, you know, what, what, what is, we all kind of have our written missions, what we do with our programs, but you know, what is your biggest hope that someone walks away with from your program? Um, we'll just kind of go, kind of go around great question so and you're gonna speak or you want to go no go 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 ah uh, okay so first of all we as our young people asked we we want youth workers who are well trained who really know their orthodox theology who really love christ and love the church and are able to convey the teachings of the church to our young people in a very real effective way that brings them into a deeper relationship with Christ and the church. So we're hoping that our students will be much better equipped to go out into the uh, ministry world and do really good work. Uh, our program, as some of yours are, is very intensive. It's uh, meant for those who are really serious, who uh, really want to do this work, perhaps for many years to come. And uh, so our hopes are that they will be well equipped. Our young people asked us for that. They specifically said, we want youth workers who really know their faith, who know their theology and can really teach. And that's our goal. We, we want to really equip youth workers. And I'm, I'm excited to see this because there was a time when we were kind of alone doing this. And it's so good to see so many others joining us and taking the education of our youth workers so seriously. So it's good. Um, Father, just, you, you said that before, and you just mentioned it again, that this came from your, your young people. And yes. what's interesting is our certification course came the same way. Uh, mm -hmm. Our, we have all different names for it, clergy, laity, all American council, we call it a sabor. Uh, at our, our uh, triannual sabor, uh, when I first got my job, we instituted a youth sabor. And out of that very first youth support, the delegates um, said that they would like to have their youth workers be better trained. Yeah. And not that they, you know, not saying that in a derogatory way or that the people that worked with them, that they didn't have good relationships with them, but they just felt that sometimes they didn't have the tools they needed to work with them. So, you know, I think listening to our kids is one of the most important things we can do. You know, if we keep our ears yeah. open to our young people, we're going to know better how to serve them. So, yeah. you know, I try to focus on that in the certification course. And that's one of the thing, main things I want people to right. walk away with when they walk out of my certification course, that they feel that they are better equipped, uh, as you said, better equipped to do their job. But that they understand why they're doing the work. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, you can jump into it and say, I have the heart for it. I love it. I love kids. But then to understand why God's called you to that right. work. I think that's really important to understand that. And the response, I want people to walk away with, with the understanding of what it means to serve our Lord through doing ministry and serving our young people. And then, you know, to really walk away feeling more secure 
in the work that they're doing more more confident that they are um, able to do the ministry that's been set before them. Mm-hmm. Um, what's, inter- yeah. Yeah. what's interesting is that our diocese and North American Council of Teen Soyo offices actually recognized the difference because when they came to us asking us to do it, they had already uh, witnessed and worked with some youth directors who really knew their Orthodox theology, who had come out of seminaries, um, not only knew their Orthodox theology, but knew youth work. And they, they came to us and they said, we see the difference between those who are really theologically trained and equipped and those youth workers that are not. They, they, they recognize the difference and they told us, we want well, well-trained youth workers because we want to stay in the church and we want to know Christ. And they understood it was essential. And, and I'm grateful that the church is responding to their request. And, and in fact, our teens didn't just ask for it. They established a quarter of a million dollar endowment to scholarship wow. our Antiochian youth workers that are going uh, and participating in the Anti- uh, Antiochian House of Studies. So this year we, we gave out uh, a number of uh, $1,600 scholarships. Uh, I think it was seven of them from our teens just to uh, help those youth workers uh, get through. And those scholarships are available to any Antiochian youth worker uh, that's participating in our program. That's how serious our kids are. They were willing to pay for it. And can I just, I wanna add, you know, as I think deeply about youth work in our churches and everything, um, I'm a big, obviously just created this 12 month residential. It can't replace everything you're doing ever. Um, because I actually think more important is when people are on the ground at their parishes trying to do the work and they get mentoring and coaching from other people and they get mm-hmm. new information coming in and, you know, new great reading that gets them inspired and all of that. So mm-hmm. um, that actually, I think, you know, sort of the continuing ed aspect is, um, is so important and, you know, Ideally, people come and will do residential and then feed into everything else you're doing and be ministered to by that. Um, because we see real burnout um, and, and you all are solving that. Yeah, so the beauty of the four programs that are being offered here is each one has something unique to offer and each one has its place in the church. And, and in many ways, they're all stepping stones to each other. So uh, I'm just, I can tell you as a youth worker of 40 something years, I am so delighted because our youth worker world has changed so dramatically in that time. And uh, it's good to see many people taking youth work, youth worker training and education seriously, because that was not always the case. And uh, so I, I, we, all of these programs have beautiful things to offer. And it just depends what the, uh, the student is looking for, but each one has its unique offering. And we, and just for those of you out there listening to us, we all work with one another. And we all support one another and we're actually all friends. So we're not competing. We just realize there are many needs out there and uh, each of these programs offers something uh, to take care of the unique needs of those youth workers who are looking for various things. Our program is for those, uh, the anti Gnosis Studies, for those who are serious, willing to do three years of master degree level work. Other programs, um, you know, like, like Steve's new program, which is really great for someone who's not ready to really dive in, but wants a serious education from youth workers who really know youth work. So, and all of these are various uh, levels of those programs. So, uh, and, and Anne is the newest edition. Uh, and as someone who's taught at Holy Cross, it's, uh, it's really great to see uh, that program growing and progressing. So congratulations. Well, and I, I'd also like to encourage people who are with us or who might be seeing this later that we're all youth workers. Um, you know, as the body of Christ, we all are, an, an integral part of the formation of our young people. So um, if keeping, Steve, you know, you, you touched upon, you know, how do we keep our young people in the church, you know, in, in our relationships with one another, it's all of our responsibility. So I, I think taking some of these courses, no matter where you are within the church, would be beneficial. Um, I've had parents who have taken my certification class, uh, and, and, you know, I, I started the same way, you know, what do you hope to get out of the class? And, and they said to me, you know, I, I, I want to know how to maybe better communicate with my child as they become a teenager. Um, I had someone who actually took the course, uh, to start youth ministry in her parish and actually walked away saying to me, 
um, this helped my family. Like this helped me look at, at the dynamics of my own family. So I, 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 I would encourage people don't, don't shy away from any of these four courses. If it's something that, that sparks in you an interest, uh, 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 look into it and try it. But Steve, what I, I want you to be able to, to say like what you hope for people to get out of the process. Oh yeah. Um, I'll, I'll tell a story again, that, uh, that explains my motivation. The Effective Christian Ministry really grew out of the retreats we've been doing, uh, the Pan-Orthodox, like, Be the Bee retreats we've been doing for six years or whatever it's been now. And we redesigned them about four years ago as we kind of, like, began really getting serious about this, this, practic, this practical kind of, like, vision of, of youth ministry. And I remember we did a prayer session the first time we ever did it, um, and the kids were super uncomfortable, super uncomfortable praying out loud, praying for each other, except for one kid. And I went afterwards to the kid and I asked him like, you, you know, you kind of stood out to me because you, this seemed like second nature to you. And he said, oh yeah, I go to Young Life with all my Protestant friends and like, we actually pray for each other. And I'm sick and tired, right, of Orthodox kids growing up in Orthodox parishes not learning how to be Christians. I'm sick and tired of them learning how to pray outside the church. I'm sick and tired of them learning how to serve the poor outside the church. I'm just sick and tired of it. Um, if people take away anything from the course, I want it to be a reminder that orthodoxy is not an intellectual exercise, that it is a lived experience, that it's a way, um, and that, that those are, there are practices. To sort of Anne's point about mentorship, there are practices that are handed generation to generation. Um, and I think sometimes as Orthodox Christians, one of our temptations is we focus so much on the being right about things like orthodoxy is true, orthodox, which we, it, it is, but we forget how to do it. Um, and, you know, some of the most faithful people I've ever known in the church have, are the grandmothers and grandfathers who couldn't tell you anything about anything, but hobbled despite their, their, their weak knees to church six times a week. And, and prayed before every meal and, and uttered glory to God. That was, those are their last words. Like, that's what I want people to take away from the course. And that's what I want people to take away from all of these educational opportunities. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> I told I you it would happen. <laughs> I did too. I do too all the time. Uh, so this is this has been a pleasure not only to learn a, a little more in depth for me even what what the three of you are are presenting but uh, to give also the four of us a little bit of opportunity to talk about the issue you know like how important it is and and the different aspects of it and and how it can can affect um, our young people and and the church uh, in the long run so i'm very very grateful uh, Father Joseph, Steve, Anne, for you uh, coming and spending an evening with us and, and presenting these wonderful programs uh, to everyone here. Um, I am going to share a link with you. Uh, so orthodoxyouth.net is the official website for the Orthodox Youth Directors in North America. It is a resource website. And if you have not been there, please, please uh, go and check it out. We have tried to set it up in such a way that it is useful for youth workers, clergy, parents, um, anyone who uh, is a part of the formation of our young people, you know, providing them resource that they need. So uh, we're going to give you the link there. And all of our programs are on the website. Uh, so you can find them all there. Um, our next, uh, coming up from Orthodox Youth Directors, we will be restarting our Camp Directors Town Hall uh, the second week of September. I'm not sure if we've decided on September 9th or 10th. I have Father Stephen and Pani Daria here with us. Uh, so I, if, if, if they want to type in the chat, uh, the 9th of the 10th of September, we're restarting our town halls for youth, uh, camp directors and then our youth worker forums are also going to, uh, re restart in October and we'll be having one more, um, one more webinar for you, which I'm not going to quite announce yet, that will happen hopefully in November. And super exciting, we are having a youth worker in camp conference. It is going to be virtual, everybody, just so that you now have the official announcement. It is going to be virtual. Um, 
we will be getting you more information on that. It is going to happen that last week of January when we do have the conference normally. Uh, so I believe this year is January 20, the week, uh, the 27th to the 30th. It may or may not be a four day conference. It might be a two day, one day. Uh, but just so you know, kind of block off that time, we are going to be providing something and getting us all together. Uh, Orthodox Church of America uh, is going to be our coordinator. However, this year we're all going to be pitching in and uh, helping to plan the conference. Uh, so just uh, exciting stuff that we're, we're going to continue to be uh, presenting, uh, providing resource for you all. So uh, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you again to our presenters. Uh, pray that you all continue in good health, uh, both mentally, spiritually, physically, uh, you and your families. And uh, Father Joseph, am I forgetting anything? Steve, we had a meeting the other day, so that's why I'm looking at that. <laughs> we forgot yeah. anything. Just when you're ready, we'll close up prayer, but when you're ready. That's where I was wrapping up next. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, so very, very much. And Father Joseph, uh, if you could please close us in prayer. Sure. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Master Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you for this opportunity to meet with one another online, to share with one another our offerings of educating our youth workers who have been placed before the children of the church, whom you have placed in front of each of us. We ask that you give us the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to profess the Orthodox faith, to teach them and bring them closer to you. For you are our God, we are the people, we are all the works of your hands, and we call upon your name, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. God bless you all, and so good seeing you all. God bless. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Natalie. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.